Hello all. I uh, got snowed in today. Figured today is probably a good day to show you how I built my snow snow blower conversion. There it is, buried under the snow there. So in this video, I'm going to give you a look at how and why I converted my snow blower to electric, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that and show you how it runs. So. I'm going to dig it out and uh, fire it up. I'm going to edit this video for the first time in a while, so be a little bit of a different view for you viewers. Uh, maybe a little nicer to watch. So I'll uh, see you in a little bit after I dig this thing out, show you how it runs. I'm about ready to fire it up. Neighbors, neighbors doing his, so. I'll tell you a little bit more about it later when it's quieter. Got my extension cord plugged in. Yeah. I'll tell you more later. Digging it out was fun. Probably YouTube wanted to see that, but we'll uh, get this thing fired up, get some of this yard done. Talk to you in a bit. All right. I got carried away and did the whole yard. It was working good. So, I'll give you a little tour. This was my grandfather's snowblower that he bought brand new in 1965. And uh, I received it about 20 years ago. And I rebuilt the flathead Briggs and Stratton a time or two. And then the last time it, it kicked a rod out of itself. I probably ran it too hard. So, I uh, grabbed my one of my old junky air compressors. I still had a good motor and just uh, mounted it on there. Pretty much four bolts and a adapter plate. Line it up, bought a nice belt for it. And then uh, that's a, I got a wired for 240 volt. And then I got a nice big switch here, to turn it on and off. And I run a heavy gauge extension cord. Can't remember if it's 75 or 100 feet, but I did the math to make sure it would carry the current that I needed, and then it I tied around the tied around there for safety, <laughs> and then it's plugged into my welder socket, so it works pretty good. Um, is it dangerous? Probably, but I've been hit with 240 before, so it's not something that you want to happen. But I've always said, uh, don't get on something you're not willing to fall off of. So, yeah. This might get me again one day. Hasn't got me yet, but I might get hit. Whatever. So far, I've been running it for a year and a half, last season and this year, and I haven't had any problems so far. So I will give you a look, see if I can keep this thing running while I uh, I'll do a run through some fresh snow here and uh, show you how it goes. Five horsepower, more horsepower would be better, but five gets her done. Uh, I probably couldn't run too much more with the, with the cord I have. Okay, power on. Put it in gear. Labors a little bit there through the rough stuff. Oh, I got it in too high of a gear. There we go. That's better. It's a lot nicer than shoveling. And then you can see I just dragged the cord, try to keep it out of the tiller. Be exciting the day it gets in the tiller. So yeah, no gas, no oil, no earmuffs. I like that. Anyways, I won't bore you too much with this. I'll finish up the yard. 
I'll finish up the yard knot on film. Can you get an idea how deep it's cutting right now? That's a pretty pretty fair cut from some fresh snow. It's fairly fluffy, but fresh. And uh, yeah, we'll finish this up, then go have a refreshment. So not much money into that. Pretty much actually all free parts, except for the extension cord. I uh, paid good money for that big long extension cord. The uh, disadvantage is you got to stay close to home with it. The advantage is you never have to do your neighbor's yard because <laughs> you can't reach that far. That neighbor there asked me if I had snow blowed his yard this morning. And I told him I can't reach, so not me. But this neighborhood's pretty good. Everyone helps out and works out the snow plows, tailings, big snow plow tailings today. All right, glad you could check out my snowblower. Hope you make one too. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.